everyone and welcome back to the natural grocers 21 days to a healthier you program my name is Erin Dahl and I'm the senior nutrition education specialist at natural grocers and I'm your host throughout our series we are so excited to welcome you to week number three of our program today we are going to be wrapping things up by learning all about how to reduce your toxic burden and support daily detoxification and I think this is such an important topic because as you'll learn on a daily basis we are exposed to a soup of chemicals that can impact our health so learning about how to support everyday detoxification is vitally important and guiding us through week three today i have the pleasure of introducing christy grayson who is our nutritional health coach at our monument colorado store christy has been an educator for the past 11 years she received a bachelor's of science in general biology from the university of tennessee at chattanooga and she also has a master's in education from the university of colorado denver she has a passion for educating others in all aspects of nutrition and wellness and empowering them with the necessary tools to make positive changes. She also enjoys learning about more sustainable ways to grow food and care for the earth. In her free time, you can find her hiking with her husband, experimenting in the kitchen, reading and spending time with her friends and family. Christy, thank you so much for joining us today. We're so excited to have you. Please go ahead and take it away. Thank you so much, Erin. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to step three in our 21 days to a healthier you series. This week, we're going to focus on the topic of how to detoxify your life. We live in a chemical soup made up of some 80,000 chemicals, most of which did not exist 70 years ago. Many of them end up in our food, water, homes, the air we breathe, and ultimately in our bodies. New homes and furniture release formaldehyde, a recognized carcinogen. Think of the smells from new cars, carpet, and paint. Electronics, cars, and mattresses are treated with chemical fire retardants. From insect treatments in and around the house, to cleaning products, and even body care products, the effects of exposure can add up. Many of these synthetic chemicals are known to be hormone disruptors, carcinogens, and even mutagens, which are chemicals that can alter DNA. So having said all of that, how many toxins do you think are in the average person's blood and urine? Well, According to the Environmental Working Group, the average person carries 91 different chemicals in their blood and urine. Chemical exposure is occurring daily, whether they're inhaled, applied to our skin, ingested with food, or even injected. Common exposures include substances that are found in our health and beauty products, pesticides and herbicides, industrial pollutants, mold, preservatives, and flame retardants, petrochemical fuels and solvents, and even in our plastics and cookware, we're exposed to thousands of environmental toxins daily. Glyphosate is one common herbicide being used in agricultural practices today. Nearly 300 million pounds of glyphosate-based herbicide are sprayed in fields in the United States annually. Worldwide usage is at 9.4 million tons. And for comparison, that's equivalent to the uh, weight of water in more than 2,300 Olympic-sized swimming pools. The increased use of glyphosate across the United States has dramatically increased our exposure to this chemical through our food and water systems. Producers claimed it degraded rapidly in the environment, but studies are showing it actually stays around in the environment much longer than previously recognized. The University of California, San Francisco tested 131 public urine samples and found that 93% tested positive for glyphosate residues. 
There are a variety of factors to take into consideration when determining toxicity. For instance, how much exposure has the individual had? How long have they been exposed? Were they exposed to multiple toxins that may have a more ill effect than a single toxin? At what stage in development were they exposed? Was it in utero? During puberty? Were they sick? And last but not least, are they part of a least studied population like children and pregnant women? And therefore little information is available about the impact and effects of toxins on these populations. For optimal health, it's vital to support our body's detoxification systems. Our body has several mechanisms to both keep unwanted toxins from entering the body and removing toxins and waste from the body. So based on the information you know so far, who needs to detoxify? You're right, we all do. We all generate toxins internally as normal byproducts from everyday physiological processes and cells waste products. For example, the process of breaking down food components to produce energy uses oxygen and results in unstable molecules being created called free radicals. These molecules must be neutralized or converted to avoid buildup to toxic levels. In addition, many toxins from external sources are often fat soluble and can accumulate in fatty tissue. Our body performs its detoxification tasks, whether we're on a rigid detox or a wine tasting marathon. Providing the right ingredients for optimal function daily is the key. So let's start with an overview of the detoxification process. And to start, we'll start with the definition. The definition of detoxification is the process of removing toxins from the body. Detoxification of any toxins consumed begins in the digestive tract. After you eat, food goes through the GI and into portal circulation which leads to the liver where detoxification continues. We also have cellular detoxification to help clean up and recycle our body's waste products. It's important to note that our gut is the first line of defense between the inside of our body and the outside world. The purpose of the digestive tract is to let good things in and keep the bad things out. The contents in the digestive tract are technically outside of the body. Therefore, consider your gut as the gatekeeper, ideally letting only good stuff in like nutrients and water. However, when we have an unhealthy or potentially inflamed digestive tract, the gatekeepers are not as selective and non-nutritive substances can enter the body. Studies have shown individuals with leaky gut and inflammatory digestive tracts also have inflamed livers. And this is because the liver has to work a lot harder to filter out the toxins the digestive tract let in. The inner ecosystem of the digestive tract is designed to protect your body from outsiders. Stomach acid, the wave-like motion of the intestines and immune cells tucked into the lining of the intestines all work to prevent leaky gut. Along the intestines, especially the large intestines, there are communities of bacteria and yeast that work with your body. These bacteria nourish you. They also help protect you from the outside toxins and disease-causing microorganisms. The lining of the gut is armed with immune cells. It's designed to protect the body from parasites, bacteria, and yeast that you may pick up from food or your environment. Did you know that our liver is the largest internal organ and possibly the hardest working? It's even been described as the general of the army. It's responsible for the metabolism of carbohydrates, fats, and protein, aids in digestion, 
and the absorption of fats and fat soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K. It's responsible for the metabolism of and breakdown of hormones. Stores glycogen for energy. Helps regulate blood sugar. It's responsible for the breakdown of red blood cells. And regulates how much blood is circulating in the body. It's also the major organ responsible for detoxification. With this list of job duties, it's important to support the liver on a daily basis. The process of detoxification can be divided into three phases. In phase one, toxins are processed through a variety of chemical reactions. In phase two, the toxins are further broken down into a water soluble form more easily excreted by the body. In phase three, toxins are eliminated from the body. Let's take a moment to discuss in a bit more detail what is really going on in each phase of detoxification. Toxins reside in the fatty parts of our cells. In order to remove them from the body, they first need to be transformed into water soluble molecules. This is where phase one and a large family of enzymes called cytochrome P450s come in. These enzymes transform the toxins into a more water soluble molecule. However, this toxic molecule is not quite ready to leave the body. Let's use an analogy to help us better understand this process. Imagine you're at home cooking dinner and a glass slips from your hand shattering on the floor. What's the first step in the cleanup process? Well, first we must sweep up the glass so no one steps on it. This scenario is analogous to phase one of the detox process. The toxins are like the dangerous broken glass sitting on the floor that must be swept up. But wait, we can't finish dinner carrying around a dustpan full of broken glass. This is where phase two comes in to help further transform our toxins into a more water soluble molecule that can be safely packaged in preparation for the trash. Because phase one does not make the toxin water soluble enough to be excreted by the body, and phase one products are most often more destructive than the original toxins, phase two of the detox process is necessary as it increases the toxins water solubility and reduces their toxicity. Let's go back to our analogy. We know it can be more dangerous to carry around a dustpan full of broken glass. We could drop it on the floor, scattering it all over, or if we put it straight into the garbage, it could rip the garbage bag, or even worse, it could cut the person who carries out the trash. Therefore, we must put it into a box and tape it up in preparation for it to be transported outside to the trash can safely. The products of phase one are potentially more toxic than the original molecules, which is okay if the phase two enzymes are keeping up and can rapidly neutralize the phase one products. However, sometimes our phase one metabolism is too fast for phase two and can cause cellular damage. This is why it's important to support all phases of detoxification. The transport phase is the last step in the process of detoxification. The necessary phase three transporters are responsible for moving the now water soluble toxic molecules in and out of the cells. Most often these water soluble molecules are shuttled to the bile for elimination from the body. So wrapping up our analogy, we can now safely take out the trash via our phase three transporters. Now that our broken glass is safely packaged up from the products of our phase two enzymes. Now that we have a better understanding of how detoxification works, we're going to spend the remainder of our time focused on how we can reduce our toxic burden supporting daily detoxification by these three categories. 
limiting environmental toxins, supporting gut health, and supporting liver detoxification. Here at Natural Grocers, we have a saying, be rooted in health. We want to maintain a healthy foundation that includes diet and lifestyle choices, supplementation, and limiting environmental toxins. In order to limit environmental toxins, we want to be particular about beauty, health, and personal products that we're using. Consider controlling humidity to prevent mold in your home. Change out plastic food storage containers for glass and stainless steel. Consume organic produce and animal products to reduce pesticide exposure. Consider reverse osmosis water and a filter for your shower head as toxins can aerate when heated. In organic produce here at Natural Grocers, we only carry 100% organic produce. That means there are no GMOs and no synthetic pesticides used. In addition, in our produce department, you might find some of the foods very helpful for supporting detoxification, like dandelion greens, lemons, asparagus, garlic, and even parsley. Another way to limit environmental toxins is to choose safer cleaning products. Many household cleaning products contain toxic ingredients associated with a wide variety of health issues and endanger the environment. At Natural Grocers, we scrutinize the ingredients in our household cleaning products and avoid ingredients like artificial fragrances, artificial colors, chlorines, and products that use animal testing. And just like it's important for us to consider what we use to clean our home, it's even more important to consider what we're putting on our skin. While it's true that one of the skin's main functions is to create a barrier between the inside of the body and the rest of the world, many compounds can and do cross the skin and end up in the body. In fact, many medications and even some supplements are now available in a transdermal delivery form. Transdermal administration delivers the drug or supplement to the body through the skin. A couple examples of this are hormonal patches like estrogen or progesterone and nicotine patches. In some ways, the body is more susceptible to toxins delivered through the skin because one of our main defenses, the liver, is bypassed. Remember, this is one of our main organs responsible for detoxification. Toxins entering through the skin enter straight into systemic circulation. The blood will eventually reach the liver, but it's not the first stop. This is why it's so important to pay attention to what we apply to our skin. And we all know exercise is good for us. It's important for staying healthy, keeps muscles strong and burns calories, maintains flexibility, increases aerobic capacity, and offers a pleasurable endorphin release. But did you know it's even beneficial to the detoxification process? Exercise helps the body's organs involved in detoxification and elimination to function optimally. Increased circulation supports the liver and lymph nodes. The digestive system works well and more regularly with consistent exercise. You might be asking what kinds of exercises are good for detoxification? Well, you want to focus on gentle, low intensity aerobic exercises like running, walking, bicycling, dancing, and even swimming. These exercises get the body moving, the heart pumping, and the lungs breathing deeply. Try to exercise at a pace that you can breathe evenly and carry on a conversation. You also want to make sure you stay plenty hydrated.
Even when we're not exercising, it's important to stay hydrated throughout the day as water plays a critical role in detoxification too. So how much water should we be drinking each day? As a general guideline, you want to aim for half your body weight in ounces. However, it's important to take into consideration your level of physical activity, your intake of caffeine, and any possible diuretic medications you're currently taking. You don't want to depend on your thirst to be your guide on how much to drink. Water is largely responsible for the fluid content of the blood. As the organ that helps to filter the blood, its viscosity impacts the liver's detoxification abilities. Accordingly, not drinking enough water will increase the blood's thickness, potentially making it harder to filter. Water also flushes toxins throughout the body to be removed by the skin or bowels. It helps support digestive health and maintain regular bowel movements. Choosing water even helps us to replace those less beneficial drinks that might contain ingredients that are not supportive toward daily detoxification. So far, we've covered ways to limit our environmental toxins and now we're going to take a look at ways in which we can support our gut health. Like eating fermented foods like yogurt, kefir, kombucha, and sauerkraut. Taking a probiotic supplement to help support a good gut microbiome. Incorporating prebiotics and resistant starch to feed the good gut bacteria. Or even supplementing with calcium deglucurate, chlorella, and greens powders. Remember, the gut is your first line of defense. An inner ecosystem that is balanced and healthy supports the health of the gut wall so it can act as a barrier. That's why taking probiotics and utilizing the prebiotics can be very beneficial to support good gut health. Some bacteria produce an enzyme called beta-glucuronidase. This can be problematic because these enzymes are reversing the phase two products from the detoxification process back into their toxic form. However, calcium deglucurate inhibits or stops beta-glucuronidase in its tracks. This means that calcium deglucurate keeps those toxins bound in their package so they can be safely removed from the body. You may recall earlier in the presentation when we were discussing the three phases of detoxification. Sometimes it can be an issue when phase one products are being produced much more quickly than phase two enzymes can keep up with the process. This keeps phase one toxins recirculating in the body. However, the chlorophyll in chlorella and greens powders has been shown to slow down phase one and stimulate phase two enzyme activity. They've even been shown to bind and trap toxins in the gut, preventing their absorption. So we've discussed limiting environmental toxins and supporting gut health. And all that's left now is focusing on how to support our incredibly hardworking liver. Let's take a moment to explore how milk thistle, N-acetylcysteine, and garlic support healthy liver detoxification. Milk thistle supports the liver in a multitude of ways. In fact, it's the most well-researched plant for supporting liver health. In contrast to the popular cleanse, milk thistle works in unique ways to support the liver and daily detoxification functions. Milk thistle contains a mixture of many related polyphenolic compounds called silymarin. Silymarin supports detoxification by several complementary mechanisms. A big way that milk thistle's silymarin supports detoxification is by scavenging free radicals produced during the intermediate steps. 
Not only do the flavonoids in milk thistle act as free radical scavengers, psilomarin also supports the body's natural internal free radical scavenging abilities, specifically by supporting the production and activity of glutathione. In acetylcysteine can directly replenish our glutathione stores and is also a powerful free radical scavenger. It even supports the liver, especially when we overindulge. Garlic can support detoxification by increasing the amount of cellular machinery available to perform detoxification. It also provides the sulfur, which is used to transform toxins into easily excreted compounds. Now we've discussed a lot today, so let's take a moment and summarize some of the most important topics that we've touched on. First, detoxification occurs in the gastrointestinal tract where our gut acts as a barrier and our gut microbiome helps protect us from the toxins entering the body. Detoxification also occurs in the liver through phase one, two, and three detoxification mechanisms. We also touched on a variety of supplements that can support our detoxification systems, like probiotics, prebiotics, resistant starch, calcium d glucurate, greens and chlorella, milk thistle, NAC, and garlic. When we support our detoxification systems, we're also supporting healthy energy levels, a healthy clear complexion, digestive health, and even sleep. And I'm sure we can all agree that those are great things to support. And last, but certainly not least, we are here to support you and your health goals. So check out our website. Go over to naturalgrocers.com and learn how to connect with one of our nutritional health coaches to schedule a free one-on-one -on -one health coaching session. Yes, you heard me correctly. I said free. You can also check out some of our great recipes and access some free nutrition articles with great information to help support you and your family. I'd like to thank you all for joining me today for our step three of our 21 days to a healthier you series focused on how to detoxify your life. Back to you, Erin. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Chrissy. It was so fascinating to learn about the steps of detoxification, as well as how both the gut and the liver are involved, and what a plethora of nutrients and supplements available, like milk thistle, which is one of my favorites, to support healthy detoxification on a daily basis. And when it comes to more eco-friendly cleaning products, I can certainly say I'm a huge fan of our Natural Grocers brand cleaning products. So if you haven't tried those yet, you definitely should. They are awesome. All right, everyone, I can't believe it, but this does mark the end of our Natural Grocers 21 Days to a Healthier You program. It's crazy to think that we've already made it to this point. Time has certainly flown by, but we hope you enjoyed it as much as we did, and we hope that this program has empowered you and given you the tools that you need to uh, build your best health as well as support optimal and vibrant health. So as you continue your health journey, remember that Natural Grocers is here to support you, whether that be through free one-on-one -on -one nutritional health coaching or simply stopping by the store and asking your question to our knowledgeable good for you crew we've got you covered so thank you again for joining us and keep up the great work of staying rooted in health